What is going on, folks? This is Ask the Roots. I'm going to review a mixtape by Jim Jones that came out in early 2008, and this is Harlem's American Gangster. Now, there were two versions of this project. I'm reviewing the Spotify version, which is also the retail version that you can purchase, but there is a free version that you can get on mixtape websites if you can find it. It has a little bit altered track listing and stuff like that and also one of the singles love me no more has the game on there on the mixtape version so there is some incentive to kind of get that one but i'm reviewing the retail version and basically this project was the this project came out on the heels of like uh jim jones's uh hustlers pome which had his hit single we fly high on there so basically so basically jim jones got a surprise hit with we fly high that was definitely like a very hit meme song and crunchy kind of just southern fried kind of song that just was very hooky and it was just all over the place throughout late 2006 and throughout 2007 and it reached a point where that was kind of signature that's pretty much still one of his signature songs today but it allowed him to crest and kind of like manifest throughout 2007 and rather than have it take a little while for him to put out his next project jim jones followed up this project immediately with harlem's american gangster in early 2008 because hustlers pome with we fly high came out in november of 2006 so it was really just a little over a year and he got this so it has some hit singles on here some pretty club and Pretty club oriented and hooky type songs that we're going to get to, but this is a very nice, I feel like this was a nice placeholder until the next Jim Jones project, which he did also drop a Bird Gang album that I'm going to get to and stuff like that. There's just a bunch of stuff that kind of went on, but it was just surprising that Jim Jones had such a large 2008 because really he only had like the one hit single for the longest time. It took until Pop Champagne from his Pray for Rain album for him to get like another hit single as large as like we fly high and that type of stuff but i do definitely feel like some of this music that was kind of in between was pretty damn good and there's definitely more hits to jim jones apart from just we fly high so that's kind of the concept but to talk about the singles like um the first single which kind of bleeds into another single is love me no more and this one really has kind of like a haunting kind of club type feel towards it. i really like the kind of sparkling kind of swirling kind of mixture of this beat right here it's just really kind of harsh and wintry in a lot of ways really like the kind of winter energy about it it's just very dark and foreboding but then i really like kobe's hook on here there's a hook singer i think he's collaborated with eminem and a few others but kobe does a nice hook for jim jones on here really makes it as like a nice sparkling kind of club song it's definitely nice and uh in terms of like the music video there was a music video for this song and then after the this song ends which is only about two and a half minutes it bleeds into bird gang money which i remember that music video very briefly but bird gang money is kind of the second single but it didn't really get like an official kind of clarity just because this was kind of a surprise project as it were i mean this is really jim jones's response to jay-z's american gangster album and it wasn't even a for sure type thing that it was going to catch on i think in a lot of ways but it did that's kind of the thing so it's a uh, kudos to jim jones for having this project catch on but i think back in late 2007 when it was kind of being ushered out it was just kind of questionable but it did have two hit singles bird gang money is a fantastic follow-up single and it kind of has someone on here that reminds i think probably reminds a lot of people of jay-z his name is noe he definitely has a very similar cadence and kind of drawl as far as the way he speaks to jay-z and it's just interesting to kind of get him on a project that's to get him on a project that's kind of like a similarity to jay-z's american gangster album and then have someone like that on there that has that similar pitch uh, this is kind of the concept about it but the bird gang money is definitely a fantastic kind of club song this really has a sparkling hook the hook is probably one of the best moments on here probably on the whole album i feel like bird gang money love me no more and no fuss have some of the best hooks on here these are like the most flashy club oriented type ones i just really like the kind of vivid and vivacious kind of energy of bird gang money it's just really infectious really feels like a miniature party just within in this four and a half minutes of this song it's just an excellent one real this is probably one of jim jones best songs since we fly high i mean jim jones in my opinion has way more hits than just we fly high but this is definitely one i'm surprised it didn't chart a lot higher because this definitely had the energy of being able to it's just a complete utter hit on here and it's just a surprise one at that so it just kind of worked 
So to talk about this album, the thing about it is, is there's 13 songs on here because there's four skits and these are Dame Dash. So Jay-Z's old partner from Rockefeller, Dame Dash, hooks up with Jim Jones on here and kind of hosts this project in the way of like a DJ Wood and that type of stuff. So you get like four skits from Dame Dash on here. I didn't listen to these, but I might consider doing the skit review of this project. I'm not really sure, but just the concept. Dame Dash did some skits on here. And uh, minus those four skits, there's 13 songs. That's kind of the concept. So I'm going to recommend to you the nine or the eight and a half songs out of 13 I recommend. So those eight and a half songs would be Bird Gang Money, Love Me No More, No Fuss, I Gotta Have It, Come On, Come On, Looking At The Game, Up In Harlem, Stay Ballin', and the Almost Song Is The King. So to talk about some of these, like like I said, the, the next best song apart from the singles, I would definitely have to say is No Fuss. And you can find this on other Jim you can find this on other Jim Jones projects if you look hard enough. But I definitely like this one. It's just a real kind of oozing, kind of leery kind of club song that just has a lot of like real swagged out and kind of charismatic kind of energy on here. Really like the kind of oozing beat and the pulsating kind of beat on there. It just has a nice vibe. Felt like Max V was on the song, but he isn't. It's just kind of the similarity behind that. But it's just a nice kind of East Coast sounding, but still club oriented. A nice kind of pounding kind of club beat on there. And I also like looking at the games kind of more boom bap kind of beat. I mean, normally I don't like boom bap, but somehow this one just kind of worked. This has a nice thumping energy that'll just take you back to 1991 or something. But then it has like this kind of slinky kind of keys in there that are just kind of odd mixture but it just makes it kind of feel like you're kind of buzzed out and a little bit tipsy and that type of stuff it is a pretty nice dance song i mean i was surprised that jim jones kind of dropped a dance club song like no fuss is more of a club song but looking at the game is definitely like a pretty nice dance club song to kind of you know gyrate to and that type of stuff and um like, Come On, Come On is a nice morning song. This is definitely one that reminded me of just like the early morning hustle of getting up and kind of getting it and that type of stuff. And some of these hooks are really good. I feel like Come On, Come On has a pretty nice hook. It's just a real oozing and kind of charismatic kind of song. Just perfectly for the morning and coffee and breakfast and that type of stuff. Just something to kind of make you want to get up on your feet and get out with the day and that type of stuff. Before the sun rises kind of feeling towards it. It's just interesting kind of get this kind of morning type song from Jim Jones. It's pretty much the only song like it on here. But there are some other ones that do kind of have a a small amount of similarity like i feel like up in harlem and i also feel like stay ballin are like two songs like up in harlem is definitely kind of like a getting ready to get started with the night i mean these are really short songs up in Harlem's only a minute and a half and stay ballin's only a little over two minutes but up in harlem up in harlem really feels like this nice glittery sparkling kind of song that just kind of feels like you're getting ready to get started with the night and get ready to head to like some shindig or party or something like that and get ready to pop off really kind of nice sparkling kind of club song stay ballin is kind of like a nice kind of getting ready to get started song also this is really one that i felt like this kind of got me excited i mean it takes over a minute for the song to start up but it does kind of have a nice kind of pulsating kind of energy to something for this you know this nightlife this it really feels like a night owl kind of song it can be played in the morning too but it's just kind of something to kind of give like a shot in the arm as far as getting you boosted up and making you want to get out there and get it and just kind of have an, a fun night and that type of stuff this two good songs for that sort of concept and um i gotta have it. it's a pretty this breezy kind of club song this one's just kind of a whimsical kind of just more breezy and lackadaisical kind of club song i really feel like it has that kind of energy for it just really for like a song just cruising in the car definitely is a nice i gotta have it feels like a nice cruising in the car kind of song with your hair blowing in the wind and that sort of thing this feels like a nice breezy kind of lackadaisical kind of song but then it also has a nice pitch of just being pretty this kind of substandard kind of club cut just in like a nice uh bewildered kind of way i would have to say about it and I think that about takes care of it as far as all the songs to mention. Oh yeah, The King. The King is the almost song. Like I really like the sophisticated type vibes of this. It's really kind of felt like a more kind of fancier party, like some sort of ballroom kind of party or something like that. Something where you'd be kind of more in a suit or just something more dressed to impress kind of vibe. You know, places with that would have things like chandeliers and some of those type things and expensive curtains and that type stuff. But I don't know. It's this kind of... I mean, I I 
think the for me the beat just takes a little bit more getting used to. I mean, I at least halfway liked it, but I'm not thoroughly convinced as to how much I would listen to this song. I need to kind of mess with it more to see if this would be like a keeper and something I would listen to more than just offhandedly. Because if it's not, if I would not just listen to this more than like an eighth or a twelfth of the time, I'd probably say it's just like a like a, an almost song. But for what it is, it's at least someone that it's at least a song that caught my attention, but just not majorly. But it, but it is kind of like a nice, fancy, and sophisticated kind of song. And um, so to talk about some of these songs I didn't enjoy, I feel like the intro was kind of cruddy. Just didn't really like the emphasis of that one. Uh, it's kind of It was similar to Rick Ross's Hustlin', but just did not quite capture the energy as well. It had a very similar vibe to Rick Ross's Vibes from 2006, but it just kind of felt out of place, and I don't know how well I would have seen Jim Jones pulling that off. And like lifestyle American gangsta and up, or lifestyle American gangsta and Rockefeller laws all had some pretty bad beats on here. I just was not terribly a fan of those, and um, some of these were just kind of awkward beats, and I just couldn't. I mean, the album does exceptionally well with packing on these projects, especially considering that it was just a mixtape and just considering the fact that it wasn't even expected to really chart just because Jim Jones was pretty much only like a one hit wonder around this time. So it's just kind of the concept of being able to say, I think this was really kind of a bluesy kind of surprise hit of an album. So it's not like I was expecting it to be a full blown classic, but there's a couple kind of clumsy beats on here, like American Gangsta and Lifestyle. And then Rockefeller Laws. Rockefeller Laws is more of like a street cut that was just kind of more not so much club oriented, but just kind of like a, a standard East Coast type beat that just has something to say. But I just wasn't vibing with that one either. I feel like Jim Jones' flashier lifestyle is just more interesting. More songs like Bird Gang Money and Stay Ballin' and No Fuss would probably have been more up his alley. But for what it is, I mean, this project really delivered. This project really delivered. I just feel like it really pretty much handled it pretty well, and especially for a mixtape that was supposed to be free. I think for the most part, you can find a lot of these songs on the mixtape version. So the fact that this was a free project, and it's, I would say it's pretty much on par with Jay-Z's American Gangster album. I mean, Jay-Z's American Gangster from 2007 is quite the hot ticket, but this is pretty much a pretty solid alternative to it. If you really are just not sold on Jay-Z, but you like that kind of style of such a thing, and this is kind of up that alley, in a lot of ways it is quality with it, even if Jim Jones is not the lyricist that Jay-Z is. That's pretty paltry of a complaint to say. So yeah, I would say me liking eight and a half out of 13 songs. I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, mixtape or album like an eight and a like, yeah, like an eight and a half out of ten. I think that's solid enough. I would give it an eight point twenty five, but I'll give it an eight and a half just because, you know, just depending upon how much I like the King song. Eight and a half out of ten. Yeah, eight and a half out of ten. So in terms of the social score, I really feel like I, I probably am gonna have to give the social score like an eight and a half too, just because there's just a lot of quality cuts on here that kind of have a lot of this. Bird gang money, love me no more, no fuss, looking at the game, up in Harlem. I gotta have it, stay ballin'. I mean, there's just plenty of moments. Even the King has some sophisticated nightlife style to it. So there's just plenty of cuts on here out of 13 that really have the deliverance of just being a flashy kind of album and just kind of having some ornate stuff about it. So it's just kind of the combination. I just feel like Harlem's American Gangster is just kind of a more in the trenches version of Jay-Z's version, which was just kind of a more sophisticated and more OG version of that, but I do kind of feel like this concept of it, it's not that Jim Jones is not an OG, but it's just kind of, or Jim Jones is a little bit more kind of still reckless a bit more than Jay-Z kind of was. This is kind of the concept, but for what it is, eight and a half out of 10 across the board, nice social kind of feels. NOE is a pretty good lyricist. He's, he's actually a better lyricist in my opinion than Jim Jones, but he really nails some of these songs. It's good to see him on there, and there's some really outstanding hooks. This is a pretty hooky album, just like Hustler's P.O.M.E. was. So it's just too bad that this record didn't chart and stuff like that, but this is kind of the thing. But yeah, so in terms of the future, like Jim Jones has dropped a project recently. I'll have to see about some of these, but I do have some more Jim Jones records I'm going to review and such. We're going to get some more of these kind of going, so...